of the benefits of this story, of the benefits of this story, is that both Adam and Iblis, Adam the leader of the prophets of his time, the father of all of humanity, and Iblis the leader of evil, they both realized that Allah Azza wa Jal and only Allah could give them what they desired. Even though they desired very different things, even Iblis realized only Allah can give me what I want. Despite his evil nature, despite the, the filth that he was upon, when he really needed something, he had to turn to Allah. He realized nobody else could possibly give him what he wants. Now, if even Iblis understands this, is it not strange to find many groups of people, some who even call themselves Muslims, who think that other than Allah can give them what they want? Is it not amazing that people, some of whom call themselves Muslims, of course there are many of other religions and faiths who pray to other than Allah. But unfortunately we even have some who call themselves Muslims, but they turn to other than Allah. They turn to a dead saint, they turn to a shaykh, they turn to a peer, they turn to this, they turn to that. Even Iblis realized only Allah can give him what he wants. Forget Adam and the prophets, of course they know this. But even Iblis, when he really, really, really wanted something, he didn't say, Ya Ghoth al-A'zam, Ya Ali, Ya Fulan, Ya Allan. He didn't say this. He said, Oh my Lord, let me live till the day of judgment. I find it amazing that a Muslim says La ilaha illallah which translates as there is no deity worthy of worship other than Allah and dua is the essence of worship and yet he still goes to the grave of a saint and he says Ya Ghoth al-A'zam, Ya Ali, Ya Abdul Qadir al-Jilani, Ya Fulan, Ya Allan give me this and give me that where is our iman and taqwa? Where is our understanding of La ilaha illallah? Anybody who turns to other than Allah for dua has not understood the meaning of La ilaha illallah. And that is why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, you know there are over 500 verses in the Quran. And I'm not exaggerating. Over 500 verses where Allah prohibits making dua to other than Him. Explicitly. Of these verses, وَمَنْ أَضَلُّ مِمَّنْ يَدْعُ مِن دُونِ اللَّهِ مَنْ لَا يَسْتَجِبُ لَهُ إِلَى يَوْمِ الْقِيَامَةِ Who is more foolish and misguided? Not even Iblis fell into this. That's why Allah is saying this. Who is more foolish and misguided than someone who makes dua to other than Allah? To a creature and a being that will not even respond to him until the end of times. Who can be more foolish than this? Allah says in the Quran, إِن تَدْعُوهُمْ Listen to this ayah. إِن تَدْعُوهُمْ لَا يَسْمَعُوا دُعَاءَكُمْ If you make dua to these dead people, they can't even hear your dua. وَلَوْ سَمِعُوا Even if they could hear, they could not give you what you want. مَسْتَجَابُوا لَكُمْ They wouldn't have the power. Even if they could hear you, they wouldn't have the power to give you what you want. On top of that, وَيَوْمَ الْقِيَامَةِ يَكْفُرُونَ بِشِرْكِكُمْ And on the day of judgment, this is a beautiful verse, they will do kufr of your shirk. يَكْفُرُونَ بِشِرْكِكُمْ They will dissociate from your shirk. And when you look at the tafsir of this ayah, when you look at what this ayah means, the scholars of tafsir, they say, this ayah is a reference to those spiritually guided, righteous human beings who were worshipped besides Allah and they never called for that worship. For example, Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ, Isa ibn Maryam, a noble prophet, one of the greatest human beings to walk on the face of this earth. One of the five mightiest messengers whom Allah sent. Someone whom Allah gave miracles, the like of which He gave no other prophet. Did Jesus Christ ever tell His followers to worship Him? Did this noble prophet, did this worshipper of Allah ever tell mankind, take me as a God besides God? Worship me, ask me of anything? Not once did He do so. Not once. And yet what do many Christians of our times do? Oh Jesus, save me. Oh Jesus, grant me salvation. Oh Jesus, oh Jesus. Jesus Christ, Isa ibn Maryam, only told us to worship God. Only told us to be sincere to God. And yet his followers elevated him. His followers took him to a level he himself never wanted. 
And so Allah says in the Quran about Jesus Christ and about people such as the righteous saints. Abdul Qadir al Jilani is an author, a scholar, an academic, an imam, an alim. You read his books, they're still in print. It is nothing but Quran and Sunnah. Abdul Qadir al Jilani is a great imam, Zahid. He never told the people to worship him. And yet, what do we have now? We have millions of Muslims. Ya Abdul Qadir al Jilani, Ya Fulan, Ya Allan. These people were righteous Imams. They never told the human beings to raise them to gods. Just like Jesus Christ. So Allah says, in reference to these people, if you make dua to Jesus Christ, to Abdul Qadir al Jilani, to Chishti, to this, to that, they will not even hear your dua. And even if God gave them the power to hear, they wouldn't have the power to give you what you want. And to top it all off, on the day of judgment they will come and they will say, and we know this from other verses in the Quran, Surah Al-Ma'idah, Allah says in the Quran, I will ask Jesus Christ, أَأَنْتَ قُلْتَ لِلنَّاسِ اتَّخِذُونِي وَأُمِّيَ إِلَهِنِي مِن دُونِ اللَّهِ God says, Allah says, I will ask Jesus Christ, did you tell people, did you command your followers to worship you, to worship your mother besides God? And Jesus Christ will respond, Subhanak, exalted be you. I never said to them anything other than what you told me to tell them. I never increased the message. I only said, worship God, my Lord and your Lord. God is my Lord. Allah is my Lord and your Lord. That's all I told them. So on the day of judgment, Jesus Christ will tell Christians, I didn't tell you to make me a God or a son of God. Abdul Qadir al Jilani and all the righteous people, insha'Allah, if they were truly righteous and it looks like they were truly righteous, they too will come and they will tell. On the day of judgment, I didn't tell anybody to worship me. I didn't tell people to build mausoleums and huge structures around my grave and do tawaf around it and make dua to it. I didn't do this. The people did it. So we learn from this story. Even Iblis understands this. And who is more misguided than somebody who falls into something that Iblis himself did not fall into? We have not been good servants of Allah. We have not been true servants and Muslims. Our sins are too numerous. And this is exactly what Adam السلام, said, Rabbana ظَلَمْنَا أَنفُسَنَا Oh our Lord, we have wronged ourselves. That's how you begin dua. Oh Allah, I know I'm not the best Muslim. Oh Allah, I know that I have fallen short. Oh Allah, I know I am at fault. And yet I still turn to you because there is no other being out there I can turn to. There is no other God besides you. There is no other Lord, no other ever merciful, ever caring, loving God other than you. You acknowledge your sins. رَبَّنَا ظَلَمْنَا أَنفُسَنَا Oh our Lord, we have done wrong. And then you turn to Allah begging and pleading your state. O oh Muslims, there is much to talk about and time is of the essence and we need to wrap up. O oh Muslim, realize that our honor lies in humbling ourselves before the one who has honor and that is Al-Aziz. Our honor lies in humbling ourselves before Al-Aziz and our strength lies in admitting our complete weakness in front of Al-Qawi. This is how we become strong by acknowledging that the only true Al-Qawi is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And I conclude this talk by giving a very beautiful statement and piece of advice that one of the famous scholars of the past said, Ibrahim ibn Adham. He was asked by his students, he was asked by his students, why is it that Allah doesn't answer our prayers? We've been praying for a long time. Why doesn't He answer our prayers? And so Ibrahim ibn Adham said, it is because you know Allah, but you don't obey Him. And you know the Prophet, but you don't follow his Sunnah. And you know the Quran, but you don't act upon it. And you eat from the blessings of Allah, but you are not thankful for those blessings. And you know paradise, but you're not striving to get to it. And you know the fire of hell, but you're not running away from it. And you know shaitan, but you don't fight him. And you know death, but you do not prepare for it. Brothers and sisters, Allah says in the Quran, وَإِذَا سَأَلَكَ عِبَادِي عَنِّي فَإِنِّي قَرِيبٌ When my servant asks you about me, tell him, I am ever close. أُجِيبُ دَعْوَةَ الدَّاعِ إِذَا دَعَانِ I shall respond to the call of the one who calls out to me. 
فَلْيَسْتَجِيبُوا لِي Let them call out to me وَلْيُؤْمِنُوا بِي And let them believe in me لَعَلَّهُمْ يَرْشِدُونَ So that they may be rightly guided. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us the iman and the tawfiq and the amal to believe in Him the way that He deserves to be believed Him and to worship Him the way that He deserves to be worshipped and to make dua to Him the way that He deserves dua to be made to Him. وَآخِرُ